Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this series of videos, which is intended to be watched as an entire set, we're going to look at the needs analysis and we're going to break this down a little bit. We're going to look at needs analysis for life insurance and I'm going to go into a little bit more depth here than what you might have seen elsewhere, including in some of my other videos where I do a fairly simple version of the needs analysis for life insurance. This, by the way, is not intended for students who are pursuing the LLQP, although certainly after you're done your LLQP, you might find this useful. This is also going to help us with uh, disability insurance. And again, we do have a video that covers the disability insurance needs analysis. We're going to go into a, a little bit more, not a ton more depth here. And we're going to do a little bit of discussion anyways around the critical illness insurance needs analysis. So just as a matter of review here, we're going to look at the basic needs analysis that we generally see used. And in the basic needs analysis that we usually run into, and this is based on some work that was done at the American College in the 19, which is a primarily a financial services educational institution based out of Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. And this institution uh, is where a lot of the technical knowledge that we have around insurance really originates from. It's where the CLU, for those that know that program, originates. So what happens around the traditional life insurance needs analysis is we're going to form some sort of a capitalization of income where basically we say we've got an income earner and our income earner makes, just for the sake of argument, $50,000 a year and we maybe assume a 4% discount rate, that is we say if this person died, we would be able to get a 4% return on some principle that's left behind, and this just results in us doing a little bit of division here. This would require then a million dollar death benefit, just $50,000 divided by 4%. Sorry, let me fix that. That's $1,250,000. And basically we would say here, hey, if you had $1,250,000 available at death, or if your survivors did, obviously, they would be able to invest that, get a 4% return, and they would replace that $50,000 of income that they're used to seeing from you, and they would replace that for the rest of your life. And once you're done that, then you would add in any debts. So this is what we might refer to as an income-based approach. And it's a simple enough approach and very easy to understand. The problem here is that it may not actually be the best way to do this. So what we've seen then is the development of some needs-based approaches. And in these needs-based approaches, we would do something very similar here, but we start off with a little bit more of a robust discussion where we would say, okay, if you died today and you leave behind a spouse and so forth, spouse and kids, for example, we could, as part of a robust financial planning discussion, go through and figure out exactly what they're going to be short. So we would do things like figure out things like child care, uh, reduction in some of your hobbies. We would say with only one vehicle in the household, what's the shortfall here? And it might be more or it might be less. Let's say for the sake of argument, that it was just $40,000 and we might be able to say uh, maybe it's $40,000 and it's just that for the next 20 years and then after that there would be no more shortfall. Now I don't care if that's realistic or not but just for the sake of argument let's say that that's what we came to and this would then lead us to a quick time value of money calculation and you'd pull out your financial calculator 
again assuming a 4% rate of return now and you would need about five hundred and forty three thousand dollars give or take of insurance and of course you'd round that up to probably six hundred thousand or thereabouts just to get the best band available maybe even seven hundred and fifty thousand the point is that it's substantially less than what we see over here and this is what we do find so there's a study done that was published in the journal of financial planning in march of two thousand and nine that discussed this in some detail and the result of that study was that a needs-based analysis tended to be more accurate. An income-based approach tended to over-insure in about 70% of cases, whereas a needs-based analysis was going to get it right about 90% of the time. And I know that there are those out there who will say, well, it's not the worst thing to be overinsured, and I would agree with that. There are certainly worse things than having too much life insurance. But if we assume that our clients have finite financial resources and that whatever financial resources don't go towards life insurance, go towards some other financial goal, then really we should be trying to get it right. We should be trying to put the right amount of insurance in place. I'm not necessarily saying that this is the right amount of insurance, at least not yet. We're going to come back over the course of the next few videos and explore this further. So we can use this very basic approach and probably create no harm for the client except that they're spending more money than they need to. And we probably are going to rail against that in other components of their financial plan whereas maybe doing it this way when we say you know what, we're going to use this needs based approach uh, maybe here we end up with a, a more precise number and we free up some dollars to be used elsewhere so we're going to delve into this needs based approach a little bit more I'm going to work through a more precise method than what we just did here and we're going to maybe see if we can develop a little bit better needs analysis tool around this we're going to do this primarily for life insurance and then as part of the video series we're going to focus a little bit on disability and critical illness insurance as well thank you very much uh, please tune in for the videos that will follow that in this series